Thank you. 
Good morning and welcome. We are so grateful to be able to be here together um, as it's also kind of a start of getting ready for the school year. So we're doing the blessing of the backpacks um, here in person. And if you're with us remotely and need some of the awesome items we have, um, please reach out to us, young and old alike. You have a purse. You have a briefcase. You maybe have some place in your car, some place to either, you can color one, that's awesome. But the, in here, there's a tag. You could use it as a luggage tag. It's got a little blessing charm. We're kind of about the swag around here. That stuff we all get because it helps us remember. And this year for the blessing of the backpacks, we're using that theme of taking in that blessing so that we can share it. We are blessed so that we can bless others. So I hope you'll keep letting in good things. You'll share them with friends, with neighbors, with others, because as we approach the second article of the creed about Jesus, he gave this life of his for us so that we could fully take it in and share it with the world. So I'm going to just encourage you, and if you didn't grab one, now you can always grab them at the end of the service. They're in two baskets. Maybe you even have that college student you'd like to secretly bless on their way. <gasps> Pop it in their suitcase. Send it in a care package. I am all about, even if we're going to be sneaky about it, we've got good intentions. So welcome. I am so grateful we are here together. You should here in person also have a bulletin for the Apostles in August um, theme, as well as a hymnal. So we're going to take a moment to be here. No place else. Fully present in the presence of one another here in person, also remotely on Facebook, practicing being aware, awake, and alive to the presence of God that is with us always. I invite you to join me in a moment of silence. Please stand if you're here present as we begin with our opening litany, which you'll find inside your Apostles in August Bulletin. We begin in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What does this mean, this belief? I believe that God has created me together with all that exists. God daily and abundantly provides for me. We confess that Jesus is Lord. He has redeemed and freed us so that we may belong to him. How is this possible when we are who we are? We believe because the Holy Spirit calls us, called, gathered, enlightened, and made holy, we praise God. This is most certainly true. I invite you to join in our opening hymn. It's number 719 in your With One Voice um, hymnal. And for those of you who are here with us virtually, you get it on the screen. Is it, did I give you the wrong number? Just verses one and three only. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may wholly be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray, as you will but always to your glory and the welfare of your people through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Listen for the word of the Lord. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand that the will of the Lord is what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to the God, the Father at all times and for everything in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So at this time, for um, our children's message, we're going to be doing the blessing of the backpacks. So at the back, there were the two um, plastic bags. One has a nice plastic um, card in it. You can use it as an identifier. It's got a little blessing charm. It's got a cord. Um, and then the other one is a, you can color it in, as I said in the opening announcements. Maybe there's someone in your life that you want to share this with, that you want to um, pass on the blessings. So I've got a special prayer um, for the school year. This comes from an organization called um, Illustrated Ministries, and they come up with so many great things um, to share with us. So I'm going to um, start with an opening prayer that they wrote. Please join me as we pray. God, our teacher who helps us to understand the world around us. Thank you for the privilege of education. In a year of turmoil, disruption, and loss, we recognize the gift of learning and the gift of teaching in ways we may not have appreciated before. You have blessed our communities with teachers who take new skills and concepts and pass them along to each new class of young people. Jesus, who came as a child to show us how to be fully human, to show us how to be children of God. You've given our children minds that grow and develop in unique ways at unique speeds. And we are astounded by that miracle. You speak to us through the words, actions, play and feelings of children. You call us to listen to the spirit speaking through 
our young siblings in Christ. Together, we celebrate the beginning of this new school year and ask for your blessings upon children, educators, and families who support them. In this celebration of education and learning, we don't forget that there are children and families and teachers who don't have the resources they need. Help us today to remember those who are beginning this school year, those who have what they need and grow in safety, those who lack supplies, all of us, help us to be your hearts and hands. Help us to put aside our fears so that we can love and serve one another. As we worship together, we lift up our young people and all those who care for them and teach them. Open our hearts to what you are saying to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So for all of you who are getting ready to start school, here's one of the things I want you to consider when you see the blessing of your backpack on there. I want you to think about who you can pray for. Okay, so just take a moment right now and I'm gonna give you some suggestions. When you go to school, as you get ready and you're in the car, you've got your backpack packed, what would it be like to offer up a prayer for your teacher? Or if you're in middle school or high school, your teachers. Do you know they need your prayers? How many of you are teachers here with us gathered, right? Do you need the prayers of your children? Absolutely, right? We get to be blessed to be a blessing. We learn how to pray, not only so that we can learn how God wants to hear all the things that are going on with us, but we learn how to pray so that we can learn how to pray for one another. But prayer goes along with actions. We heard a little bit about that from our reading in Ephesians. So last month, when we talked about joyful July, we talked about those fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. All of those are blessings and we've got to practice them. Okay. So I want you to just use these as a reminder that when you see them on your backpack, or if you are going to work and you're going to put it on a briefcase, or I use a backpack for work, or you're going to put it in your car, I want you to use it as a reminder that God has given to each one of us the ability to generously share the blessings we have. And sometimes we might feel like it's so little, but that's what we remember, that Jesus, our teacher, taught us stories like a mustard seed, the smallest of things, or the lost coin, or the lost sheep, all these little small things God cares about deeply, and God can use the smallest of things to bring about the biggest of results. So encourage you to pray for your teachers. And for those of you who teach or in education, and we have so many in our congregation, know that um, I've created a whole prayer list with your names on it. If you haven't gotten emails from me that are designed for teachers, um, please reach out to me and I'll get you on that email list because I pray for you regularly. And I personally, I, my children, fortunately are older, but every day I said, thank you, God, that I'm not the teacher because I don't think I could do it. And some of you as parents have spent the past year really appreciating how much your teachers do. And some of you will still be in that role because your children will learn remotely. So if you want to be added to that prayer list for teachers because you're teaching at home, please reach out to me, send me an email, I'll add you to it. But this is a time, children too, of all ages, do you know how powerful it is to pray for your parents? It makes a big difference to them. Love them. They're doing just like you, the best that they can. So I invite you in the manner of our children's message to um, put your hands out. We'll join them together and please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for giving us blessings. Thank you for listening to our prayers. Help us be a blessing and pray for one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if you have your um, blessings 
Um, if you have your backpack items, I invite you to hold on to them as I say a blessing. And um, maybe you can take these and um, send them as a blessing. Along with the backpack tag, I also want to share a blessing with you. A blessing is something so you can that you receive. So can you open your hands and put those in there or just open your hands if you don't have anything? And I want you to imagine that the words are dancing and floating and fluttering around and watch them land on your hands. And if you have backpacks or on those backpack blessings. God of fresh starts and new beginnings. We bring ourselves, our big feelings and our backpacks to you. Last year was different from what we expected. We couldn't see our friends or play on playgrounds. We learned at home in masks, six feet apart or both. In all these changes, we may have felt sad and alone. Jesus, you are our friend who comforts us. Hold us close and wipe our tears. In our backpacks, we carry all sorts of things. There are endless possibilities of what this new year might bring, of what we might learn, who we might know, and who we might become. Jesus, our friend, you're always with us. Be with us through it all. Be with us as we ride bikes to school or ride the bus, as we walk or as we stay home, as we buckle in seatbelts, zip up jackets and tie shoes. However we get there and whatever we wear, bless this journey and make it be something new. For all of the grown-ups who are going back to school, God with us, Jesus, Emmanuel, be with them too. Thank you for our teachers, helpers, caregivers, and leaders for all they do to help us love, serve, and grow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And just always know when you need that blessing, consider just opening your hands. Our worship continues now with the reading of the Holy Gospel, so I invite you to stand. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because the Father because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which our ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. I can't remember if I mentioned it to our friends in Zoom and on Facebook Live. We had a few technical difficulties. So if one of you all of a sudden becomes the leader in Zoom, think of a few things to say. Please join me as we pray. Blessed Jesus, our friend, our savior, the Prince of Peace, the Alpha, the Omega, the word of God made flesh. May we tap into your power and your presence that is always with us. And may your word be the bread of heaven, the word of life, fuel for the journey. In Jesus, your own name, we pray. Amen. Jesus saved my life. And Jesus did this before I had any idea or was able to take it in. But this morning, I want to share with you a little school memory. Maybe some of you have heard me talk about how I transitioned from public school in sixth grade to private school in seventh grade. My parents were worried. My sixth grade showing up wasn't super great. I think they could see a little foretaste of what might be to come 
in a public school, I was looking for trouble. It seemed so much fun. In the chaos and the confusion of a home that I grew up in, I needed something. I wanted something. And even in the midst of that chaos and confusion, my parents had the clarity to maybe make a different choice for me, one that I was not happy with. I went from a public elementary school that had hundreds to a private school that in middle school only had 150. Everyone else had already been there. They'd been there since preschool or kindergarten. But in that private Lutheran school that I attended, I heard the word of life, even though I'd gone to church my whole life in a new and different way. And so as I was thinking about that school year and how it started and all my fears and my anxieties, and I think about Jesus, I know that Jesus became real in a whole new way for me at that transition. As we're exploring the Apostles and Apostles' Creed in this season of August or this month of August, maybe some of you have read or heard that devotion that sometimes people give at the death of somebody, that there is just a dash, right? Like, and actually, um, I was out at a cemetery um, last week um, with my beloved sister-in-laws, and we were, this is not something from my tradition, but from my husband's tradition, we were looking at the at the family plot. I don't, didn't grow up with that. And sometimes there's designs on those tombstones and sometimes there's a Bible verse or words, but often it's just the day of their birth and the day of their death. So maybe you've heard that devotion about the dash. Well, in some ways in the second article of the creed, the dash and everything about Jesus's life is missing. I invite you to just look at our bulletin and let's look at that second article of the creed. So you'll find it right in the middle, right? So we say, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was, okay, we've got his birth, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and then suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. What happened? A whole lot. What happened between the birth of Jesus, his crucifixion, his death, his burial, and then his resurrection? So often, Jesus has saved my life is a statement about the hereafter. I want to invite you as we're exploring being called as apostles, those sent out to share the good news. I want you to take to heart that Jesus is saving this life this moment, this breath for you and for me and for all of us right here and right now. Early this morning, I received a text from a beloved friend. As I said earlier, for the first time, her children will be returning to school. Fear, anxiety, apprehension. Yesterday at our meet and greet, I spoke with one of our new neighbors from the SEA community who's leaving this morning to take her daughter to college. She wishes she would just be here. Don't lose your life into fears, frustrations, and anxieties because you're powerless over them. Tap into this one, Alpha and Omega, Lamb of God, Prince of Peace, Lord of all, King of Kings, the Good Shepherd. The invitation in this journey of following Jesus is to not just know about him, but to know him. I know about a lot of stuff, as I'm sure all of you do. But there's something different when we really know it. That's what happened for me in this transition from public to private school. I knew about Jesus. For sure, I'd gone to Sunday school. But I was blessed when I started confirmation to have a confirmation pastor who didn't want us to just know about God, but to be in relationship and experience the power and the presence and the love and the forgiveness and the reconciliation. And that's what I want to invite you into. Take it to heart. 
that that dash, that all that occurred in the life and the teachings of Jesus is for you. So that those sacred stories of our sacred scripture become your stories. I want you to take a moment right now and consider this. I don't know about any of you in particular, but I will say in general, often there is a feeling of being lost. Do you feel lost at all right now? I just want you to consider that. Is there some part of your life that feels lost? Maybe it's a lost relationship, a lost identity. Maybe there's something actually that's physically lost in your life. Jesus seeks the lost. And how far will Jesus go? You know that story. Leaving the 99 to pursue the one. And that one, it's you. The woman who searches endlessly for the single coin, that too is you. Jesus, right now, is pursuing you. Can you feel it? Can you pause and take that moment to let it in? A love beyond our human comprehension. That is the dash. A God who comes to us in our very form, knowing the deep sorrows and the great joys, the fear and the frustrations, the uncertainties. This is God with us, Emmanuel. I'm going to invite you this week as we transition between the second and the third article of the creed. You can always take your little booklet home and it's available on our website to download or in emails. I want to invite you to take to heart that this knowing Jesus deeply will be a lifelong journey. I'm going to close with one story that keeps coming back to me and maybe I've shared it with some of you. It was actually kind of heartbreaking for me and motivating. For four years, I served as a chaplain at a Good Samaritan nursing home, assisted living, senior living in Boulder. It's since closed. I never thought that I would be working with older adults. I was all about kids and youth, which I'm super excited about. We're getting ready for the youth gathering. But on a whim, because someone said, well, why don't you just go for the interview? And I was, that was really like, do you ever have those kind of motives? Like you're really not there for the job. You just want to see what it's like to interview. Okay. I'm sneaky, right? I did that whole sneaky thing, but it's amazing how the spirit can work. Cause I went just to see, cause I'd been out of the workforce. I'd stayed home parenting um, my two children, but I was ready to try something new, but something happened in that interview. And I felt it. I felt that call. And I was like, wow, maybe this is something I could do. So I took that, that job. It taught me so many things that it was just such an amazing experience. But there was a gentleman who was approaching his 100th birthday. He was actually living in the senior housing. He wasn't in the nursing home. He wasn't in the assisted living. He actually got remarried at like age 98. He was a pretty amazing person. And when I asked him if he would like to come to our worship service and have communion, this is what he said to me, and this was the great heartbreak. He said, no, I don't need communion anymore. I'm all good. I was like, what? Huh? Oh, yeah, done it. Been there. It's all good. I was like, huh. So we talked over time about that. And he was all by himself, though, even as he got remarried. Self-sufficiency was so important to him and Actually, what I later found out, self-righteousness too. And it created this sense that he could just do it all. He knew about Jesus. For him, the faith that he had was his assurance of a life that was to come. But what I noticed over the time of knowing him, that he didn't have much of a life in the here and now. He got married and it wasn't really quite clear to me always why, except that was sort of something to do. Because you see the great learning I got when I worked with people in all stages of aging and, and becoming elders 
as I learned who I wanted to be like. Do you have some of those people? Jesus says our teacher is also one we aspire to follow in his footsteps. But I hope you find some people and are curious about people, and they can be of all ages, who have qualities and characteristics and you desire to have those. But I also learned about people whose future I didn't want. Isolated, arrogant, alone. I ended up having great compassion for him because he outlived that was his third wife, that third wife as well. And most days, he was mostly miserable. He was waiting for the life that was to come. But he didn't take to heart that Jesus was saving him for the life he had right now. May you leave from here today taking to heart that Jesus is saving you in this very moment. Whatever trials or tribulations or troubles, the joys and the gratitude, be connected. Knowing Jesus is with you. God with us. Emmanuel, Alpha and Omega, the Good Shepherd, the King of Kings. And take to heart that you are never alone. Amen. Our um, hymn of the day, I didn't write the number down, so I'm going to need you to tell me, Thomas, what that number is, if I can read it on my little small screen. 705. So I invite you to stand as we sing hymn 705 in with one voice. continues as we confess together our Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed, the version you'll find in your bulletin. We, can, we profess together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the prayers of the people, each petition will end with God in your mercy, and the congregation's response is, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, enlighten your church. Guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge. 
be with our teachers, our administrators, and our students. Help us to keep inviting one another into deeper understanding of things to learn and our relationship with you. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. God, in your mercy. God of creation, mend the earth. Increase our awareness of changing climate and reveal new approaches to ecological challenges we face. God, in your mercy. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. God, in your mercy. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or murdered in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and all those who suffer today. We offer up the prayers of our community. We pray for safe travels for Michelle Shaw and Randy Pfluger. We offer up prayers for Dallas and Brenna Peters, for Katie, for Julie Kale and the Reader family at the passing of her dad, for Richard Ziegler, for Shannon, Jack, and family, for Ellen, for Ryan Richardson and family, Gwen Hepner, the family of Elmer Elliott and Robert Hanlon, for Carol, Mike and Cheryl Shellhays, Greg Nelson, Tony Hayes Jr., Chuck Grote, Andrew Ike and Andy Martinez, Jan Nupp, Sarah McCombs, Linda Krabenhoft and Judy Dionese, Carol Groves and Barry Alman, Mary Stegmuller, Jamie and Byron Pfluger, Heather Harrington, Michelle ba Michael Bax and Teresa Quick and their families, the Lyons family, and those we now name either out loud or hold in the silence of our hearts. God, in your mercy, we give you thanks for the gift of education, and we pray for students of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. We pray for our hearts and all they hold, excitement and nervousness, disappointment and hope. We give to you all our loves and fears. We pray for steady self-esteem and deepening resilience. We say a special prayer for parents as the start of a new school year. It's another leap of faith. Wrap them with your reassuring love. Be present for them as they entrust their children. Help them to keep trusting in you. We pray for teachers, staff, and administrators. Bless these faithful servants with courage and confidence, knowing you are in their classroom with a steady hand on their shoulder. Help us to pray in our schools for one another, for our teachers. Give to all of us peace and patience as we balance the pressures we face. Give us bravery to build. Give us delight in the joys of life. Lord, oh, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a, a sign of peace, a chat of peace. Um, please know that you are the peace that is in the world. Um, I invite you to pray for peace. Um, welcome to those of you who are with us in Zoom and Facebook Live. May you feel this peace as we share it with one another. I invite you to go ahead and be seated. Just a couple of announcements. Um, that we have for you. Um, we've got a lot going on as we start our um, school year. Oh, we're not doing announcements. I'm just doing laboratory. Okay, I'll come back to the announcements. It's your generosity that fuels ministry here at Lord of the Hills. That was a little change. Um, anyway, thanks for that. Um, we're trying to really be um, caring and careful of one another for our in-person worship. So we hope you'll enjoy some music in our postlude, um, but keep, um, keep on um, being generous. Um, to one another and to the world. I invite you to now pray with me as I offer up this prayer. 
Jesus, bread of life, you have set the table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, the body for the life of the world. Amen. I invite you to stand. I'll have you just stand for this portion of our communion liturgy, and then you can sit and um, take it in. We're in this together. There's power in joining in a meal, even when we are each at our own seats or in our own homes, because Jesus is present in this meal. He knew how important it would be that people would take it to heart and take it into their bodies. So on the very night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Please be seated. And as you either here in person or at home, take and eat from the bottom of your cup or at home what you have, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Jesus taught his friends and his followers a prayer so that they would have words to go with his actions and they would take to heart that this was a prayer and how they might offer up these prayers. So we join now together in praying the Lord's Prayer, united with all those who have gone before us and those who will come after us. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. Now it's time for announcements. <laughs> for all our students who are entering grades eight through 12, we're meeting today at the church. If you'd like to hear more about the 2022 youth gathering that'll take place in Minneapolis. Um, come over here to the church. Um, we'll meet safely, um, probably um, even outdoors. Hey, maybe you're looking for a fun family event. The Holy Ham Hammers Hustle for Habitat Fun Walk, September 11th, just over at Cottonwood Park in Parker for all ages. So check out the website for details about that. The following day, Sunday, September 12th, is God's work, our hands. So we'd love to have you um, consider ways that we can be blessed to be a blessing, and we'll be putting out some of the options for service in our community. Thanks, everyone, for yesterday who helped put on our meet and greet um, with our new neighbors from the SEA community. Um, we have a few events after that in the planning. So look for information about that. Other items you should be able to find on our website this is the final um, week of the three week experiment number three. So keep posted for modes and um, times of worship. We'd like to keep you all flexible. Um, one of the things, pandemic begins with a P as does patience. I hope you can be patient um, with yourselves and one another as we start a new program year as well. And I've been reminding myself of this. There are, are two, constants in the midst of everything that changes. And one of the constants is change. But the other constant is God. 
God with us in all the changes. So we're going to keep practicing um, that and keeping one another safe and loving one another. So with that, um, I invite you to um, stand to receive these words of blessing. The blessing of God who has created us and all that exists. The blessing of Jesus who has redeemed us and set us free and to whom we belong. The blessing of the Holy Spirit who calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes us holy. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn during this Apostles in August is found on the back of your um, bulletin. It's the doxology, and we will sing that through two times. I invite you to look at the Great Commandment and the Great Commission, and let those be words that walk with you as well. So we're singing the doxology from the back of your bulletin. are the body of Christ. Go in peace to love, serve, and grow. And those of you who are here in person, I will greet you um, outdoors. So we've got plenty of safety and room. You're always welcome to take home um, your um, bulletin if you'd like that. And please be blessed, be a blessing, pass them on. Kids who go to school, maybe you have a friend you want to share it with. Let us go in peace. Thank you.